Hi there guys, it's Chris here with SelfMainNewbie.com and in this video we're going to go through the best M.2 NVMe SSD cards currently out there today and I'll try to keep this list as comprehensive as possible narrowing it down to my absolute favorite five picks so no matter what you're looking for there'll definitely be something on this list for you. So before we jump in drop a like and subscribe and hit the bell to be updated with new videos. All right, so as usual, I'm gonna skip all the fluff and just jump right into my recommendations. If you wanna confirm what they are, you can go down there into the description and check out that list to also ensure you get the absolute lowest pricing as well. All right, so kicking it off with my first recommendation. This is my personal favorite, and this is the Seagate Fire Cuda 530. So Seagate's Fire Cuda 530 is really one of the fastest PCIe 4.0 drivers out there. However, that's not the most important factor that is gonna to contribute to uh, the top placement or my personal favorite. Rather, it's my choice because of excellent longevity and a generous warranty that ensures maximum file integrity. Add an impressive heatsink and you've got an NVMe drive that will thrive in any environment. Seagate ensured that the 530's longevity and cool running temperatures by partnering with EKVB on designing the heatsink. You can go without if the heatsink integrated on your motherboard are up to snuff. Still, the thick yet porous chunk of aluminium you get if you invest a little extra gives the best a run for their money. The driver's terabytes written or TBW value is even more impressive. Uh, competing one terabyte models usually give out after being filled 600 to 700 times. The Fire Cuda 530 nearly doubles this, ensuring it will remain relevant long after PCIe 5.0 drives hit the shelves. Under the hood, you'll find a Fison 18 controller and Micron's 176L TLC NAND flash with impressive sequential read performance of 7,300 megabits per second. The drive doesn't let up whether you're testing it in an artificial scenario or transferring mixed data since the SLC cache is deep. Better yet, the speed drop that inevitably occurs once the cache reaches its limits doesn't impede performance that much. So in a nutshell, the pros of this, excellent all-round specs and longevity, the warranty comes with data recovery services, the heatsink noticeably improves thermals. Now the cons, the heatsink version is a bit expensive. The next one on my list is my recommendation for the best Samsung option. This is the Samsung 990 Pro. So two years after debuting the successful 980 Pro, Samsung is back with one of the best conclusions PCIe 4.0 could have hoped for. The 990 Pro is faster and can sustain optimal speeds for longer as well. It's among the most power efficient and thermally stable drives out there, even if you don't get the heatsink version. Now all you need to do is wait for the price to come down a bit before grabbing one, really. While the thermal label is chock full of data and visually uninteresting, the opposite is true for the heatsink. If you're worried your motherboard's pads can't handle it, spending a few dollars extra on the capable slab will set your mind at ease. Don't forget that it also has RGB, apparently a must for today's top tier gaming SSDs. The software support is also top notch. Samsung's newest magician suite offers everything from RGB configuration to encryption and releasing a secure drive by erasing its contents. It's also where you can choose between standard and full power modes. Think of the latter as the gaming mode on the SN850X, except here the boost provides actually tangible benefits. On the hardware side, you have two major developments, the 980 Pro's Ellipse Elpis memory controller is no more, with the slightly improved Pascal taking the reins. More important is the introduction of 7th gen 176 layer TLC AND already present on drives like the Fire Cuda 530, and the TBD rating remains at 600 terabytes on the one terabyte model. Uh, not bad, but I guess not great either. Users looking for the ultimate in PCIe 4.0 speed will have a new king to the crown, really. The 990 Pro outshines the competition whether you're running artificial testing in 3D Mark or loading games with a stopwatch in your hand. It's also bursty as well, meaning that most file transfers will be over before you know it. In a nutshell, the pros of this then, world-class PCIe 4.05 transfer speeds, useful companion software, effective heatsink with RGB that is gonna fit anywhere. The cons are, this is another expensive one. The next recommendation is the Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus. The Rocket 4 Plus lives up to its name since it's a lightning fast drive that easily reads or copies vast swaths of data without letting up. The one terabyte version has a slightly lower writing speed than the Fire Cuda 530, but that hardly matters for quickly loading levels in games. 
This is the SSD to get if you're looking for a dependable, fast and stylish drive that transcends gaming purposes. I also feel that the Rocket 4 Plus is among the generation's most attractive discs. Its base version supports a black PCB with a copper tinted thermal label. You can also get one with an efficient heatsink full of area enhancing grooves. Going for the latter is a good idea if you plan on using the rocket relentlessly since it can get hot during long transfer sessions. Even though its TBW is lower than others on this list, the Rocket 4 Plus can store an imposing amount of data before giving out. It has the same Fizon E18 controller, yet combines it with older 96L flash memory from Micron. That has little bearing on top speeds and even less on the seemingly endless SLC cache. The speed drop-off is sharper than on the Fire Cuda, but chances are you won't notice unless you're transferring, you know, huge titles over at once. Now the pros in a nutshell, excellent speeds, outstanding cache, and also very attractive if that's what you care about. The cons, the high temperature and power consumption uh, is a thing when it is stressed. The next one on my list is the WD Black SN8. 50X. So after Samsung's new 990 Pro, the SN850X seems to be the most gaming oriented among these recommendations. The version with the heatsink also has an LED to further enrich your RGB setup. You may also enable gaming mode to supposedly get shorter loading times by optimizing performance. Uh, neither are the reason it's so it's in this list though. Uh, simply put, WD's drive is an excellent one without any gimmicks. There's no question that the SN850X is the second fastest M.2 SSD with a gaming pedigree. This has more to do with the LED that glows on its beefy heatsink than with actual speeds. These, although impressive, don't fall that much out of line. Users who opt to save a few bucks by going commando will miss out on better thermals and gain one of the most stealthily designed SSDs instead. While endurance remains at 600 terabytes, the SN850X achieves greater max speeds as well as improved performance in mixed file transfers and sustained writing over the non-X version. Much of this is a consequence of the introduction of BICS5 flash memory, as well as WD's continued efforts to upgrade the proprietary controller. The newer disc also comes with Game Mode 2.0. You can turn this software side improvement on or set it on auto. And on paper, this should optimize gaming load times as well. So in a nutshell, the pros, improved memory and overall speed, broad capacity range and attractive gaming aesthetic. The cons are the gaming mode, as I just mentioned, uh, it doesn't actually do that much. The next one on my list is the Kingston Fury Renegade. And it seems that shedding the HyperX brand has done Kingston a lot of good since everything from DDR5 RAM to SSDs they've put out since then has been noticeably better. I'm particularly impressed with the Fury Renegade, an exceptionally well-rounded PCIe 4.0 SSD that plays ball with the big boys while also remaining pretty accessible. Now this is probably the fastest NVMe SSD that doesn't have a proper heatsink. It does have a stylish black and white cover made from a mixture of graphene and aluminium that's slightly thicker yet marketably more thermally efficient than regular labels. You can slip it inside laptops, consoles, and motherboards without worrying about clearance as a result. Kingston pulled out all the stops to make the Renegade a compelling competitor for the title of best MVME SSD for gaming. It has the class-leading Fizon E18 controller along with Micron's most advanced flash memory. The one terabyte version can endure almost as much usage as the Rocket 4 Plus, while peak read and write speeds rival the generation's finest. Now the Fury Renegade is marketed as a gaming drive and there's some merit to this beyond hype. It scores better than most competitors in artificial testing like 3D Mark's Disk Benchmark. The difference when loading levels or assets in actual games isn't as pronounced though. And interestingly, the Fury Renegade has a deep SLC case to draw on but struggles to recover if you reach its limit. So in a nutshell, the pros of this, good value for a top tier drive when on sale especially click that link below to see if you can catch that. Excellent longevity and power consumption and also high sustained write speeds. The cons, no heatsink option, unfortunately. All right, guys, so hopefully there's something on that list for you, no matter what you're looking for. Now, if you do have any questions, do drop them down below in the comments. And if you found value in this video, it really helps out if you drop a like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.